Now let's take a look at all of the new features for video as well as how we share that video. The first thing to notice is when I'm in the grid view in the library module and I position my cursor on top of a video clip, as I scrub left and right I actually get a preview of that clip. It'll also tell me the time of the clip or the duration of the clip and if I double click it will open up the video clip inside of Lightroom where I can either click on the little play icon right here or tap the space bar in order to play the video. Now obviously the beginning of this video is not very smooth so I want to set a new endpoint. I'll use this icon on the right hand side in order to reveal a timeline or thumbnails across the timeline. You can see where my time insertion point is right here and what I want to do is just simply drag this icon to set my new endpoint. Of course I can do all of this via the keyboard shortcuts as well, just shift I to set the endpoint and shift O to set the out point. Now we can tap the play bar again or hit the space bar and as the video moves forward as soon as we reach the out point that we want, maybe before that bird flies across, just back this up and either use shift O or drag in order to trim the end of the clip. Excellent. Let's move to another video right here and let's just scrub through it. So you can see in this video that there's also some gray horses, but I wouldn't know that by just looking at the clip. So one of the nice things that I can do is scrub to any point in the video and then use the drop down menu right here to set this as my poster frame. That way when I go back to the grid view you'll notice that this has a new frame and it is that gray horse so I immediately know which video clip has that gray horse in it. Alright now what about making changes to videos? Well, the first thing that I tried to do was go to the develop module and it says it's not supported. But there's two things we can do to work around this. First of all, let's go back to the grid view and let's take a look at quick develop. So in quick develop, I can make really quick adjustments to my video. You can see all of the different features that we can use like temperature and tint, exposure and contrast, we can change our whites and blacks, and we can also change our vibrance. So it's very easy here if I wanted to say increase the exposure by one or two stops, all I need to do is click on the exposure button. But if I want to do more than that, I can by just double clicking on the video in order to bring it up into the editor, then I can click on this icon and say to capture a frame. So let's go back to the grid view. Now you can see that I have the original video file here plus a frame capture. Now this frame I can take to the develop module and then I can make more adjustments and maybe more finely tuned adjustments than I could in quick develop. So if I wanted to change the temperature for example or if I wanted to change exposure or contrast I can do so. I can change the white clipping, the black clipping, I can change saturation and vibrance, I can also change the tone curve. So if we come down here and I'm in my point curve, if I wanted to bring maybe the clouds down a little bit in value but bring up my shadow area, I can do that. I can also go down to any of these HSL treatments. So say for example I wanted to actually desaturate the grass. I could click on saturation, grab my targeted adjustment tool and simply click and drag down. In fact I could remove the color of the grass altogether if I wanted to but let's leave just a hint of green there. I could also come down and go to split toning. In fact I could even tap the, the V key to go to grayscale and then add split toning in order to get maybe a sepia or maybe a cross process look. In addition if we go down a little bit further I, any changes that I make to camera calibration including the process version can also be changed on an individual image. But how do I apply that to the video? Very easy. All we need to do is go here on the left hand side We'll go ahead and click the plus icon and I will call this DSAT with TC for tone curve. I'll save everything in here and then click create. Now I can go back to the library module, click on the video or videos that I want to apply this to, come up here under save preset, 
go to User Presets, and apply my Desaturate with Tone Curve, and it will apply that to the video. So you can imagine we can get some really great special effects doing this, but we can also go in and make more subtle effects. You can see, for example, these two videos were taken from different angles and they have a very different color balance. So again, if I wanted to change the color balance of an image, all I need to do is simply capture my frame, click on that frame, move over to the Develop module, and in the Develop module, I'll just change the temperature a little bit, and I'm actually referencing the other file right here in my film strip. So after changing the temperature, I can see that it still needs maybe a little bit of contrast added to it, and maybe a little bit less exposure. So I'm trying to match this here, this single image, with all of the other video files. Once I've done so, all I need to do is save that as a preset. This time I'll save it as color correction, click create, come back to the grid view, click on the two videos that I need to color correct in order to get them to match all of the others in the series, come here to my saved presets, down to user presets, and then choose color correction. And Lightroom will apply those color corrections to those two videos. So we support um, the common digital SLR formats. We also support the higher end point and shoot cameras as well as the popular camera phones out there as well as Sony's AVC HD format. All right, now once you have made your edits to the in and the out point, you can of course export this video and you can do so a variety of ways. We could click the export button and you'll notice now that when you're exporting, you can include video, you can choose your format here and you can choose your quality. In addition, if you're using the published services, maybe you're publishing to Facebook and Flickr, those are also part of the Facebook and Flickr export settings that you can set up so we can export directly to those services. If you're looking for additional services, there's an icon right below that that you can click to to go online and see if there's a publishing service for whatever website you're publishing your content to. And one last thing, if you did want to quickly just email, say, uh, one of the frames that you captured or any other photograph as a JPEG, there's now a keyboard shortcut which is Command-Shift-M or Control-Shift-M if you are on Windows, but you can find it right here underneath the file menu. And in this dialog box, you would just enter in the email where you want this to go and enter in a subject. Then you can see right here the file will automatically be attached and you can choose from any of these presets or you could go in and create your own new preset. When you select that, you'll export to email. The only difference here between hard drive and email is that the format for email has already been selected for you as a JPEG. So you can make your own preset or you can simply use one of the presets that are provided and then go ahead and click send and it will bring up your email program with a new email and all of this information already in it. So that's a quick wrap up of video in Lightroom 4. Thank you so much for watching.